I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. What we're going to do today on that charging system is I got out of the shop manual. So I printed out the pages so that we can just, you know, go through the factory step-by-step -step diagnosis thing. So the, the alternators can put out a lot at lower RPM and modern cars rather than have an ammeter, which is what we were looking at. So an ammeter, what that does is it measures the amount of current that's going through the system essentially. Um, so the ammeter is mounted in the dash. And when you think about it, you really don't want a whole lot of current going, you'd have to have giant wires going up to the battery cable size wires going up to the uh, dash. So now we're off, we'll go to the bench. Uh, so they have a shunt, which is essentially a little bypass to allow a lot of the extra current to just go straight back to the battery. And then they just do a sampling. The ammeters are calibrated to, to convert essentially, or guess how much is going through. Modern cars have voltmeters, which to me is a much better way of doing it because you know how many system volts you have. Um, and, and the amount of current doesn't really matter. All you care about is the volts on those things. So here's a uh, generator. That's the generator off this car. And he, I, we'll just pull this cover off so we can look at the brushes or look at, inside at it. inspection plate right here. I don't care. I'm going to take it all the way off because I don't want to scratch it. As you can see, it's taking a lot of time to do this. I like working on dirty old cars so I can just slam it. There we go. But he is missing something in there. edge of his seat he doesn't know what he's missing there's a usually a fiber or paper type liner on here to keep it prevent it from shorting out so in here you can see these are the springs this is a brush right there are two of them on this there's one on each side one is goes to the output that's this one right here and the other one goes to ground so this thing should, you should be able to just spin it. And as you could see, when we tested, when we pulled those two leads off of the, the regulator and we hooked them together and just checked the voltage there, this thing will put out a lot of volts and it'll just keep going. Uh, what I'm gonna do is clamp this in the vise. I'm gonna clamp it so that this spins. So you hear it sounds funny when it goes counter direction. See how it's quiet going that way? And it makes noise going this way. The reason for that is the, the brushes get, they're made out of carbon. And over time, you're supposed to actually do this when you rebuild one. You got to bed them in so that they're smooth. Okay, so in one direction, they're used to going in that direction. When you change the direction, the leading edge is sharper. So it's popping off of the commutator is what it is. The commutator on a motor, now we have one hanging around here, it'd be nice, uh, is just a series of brass or, or copper plates that are hooked to wires that go through all the windings. If, if you wanna look at this, this is an alternator, inside of an alternator, this is much, much more efficient. So this just has two completely smooth brush rings, contact rings. And they're hooked to wires going through all this winding in here. The many wires wound together when you spin it will, will through induction create a voltage. Okay. So on the inside of this, which we may take apart, these these plates are the opposite direction. They go this way. And there's a whole bunch of them with gaps in between that hook to the different wires and the windings. And that's the noise you hear. 
So when I want to test one of these, what I'll do is I'm going to take a battery. I've got this test battery over here. And we're going to motor it. That's what it's called. Motoring. Take some battery jumper cables. Can't use little wires because they won't be able to generate enough current to move that thing. Chris? Okay. Hopefully this battery should be pretty decent voltage. I use this for testing all the time. We can test, check this. We got 11.96, that should be enough. Okay. I use these cables to test starters too. And you need the big cables because they have to have the big wires. So we'll put this on the, the positive on that, on the output. We'll ground the tape. Oh, there it goes. That's called motoring. So what we'll do is we'll leave it connected. I'll find a jumper wire and you can reduce the, the speed by... Uh, I think this will reduce the speed, if I remember correctly. You take voltage. So that's what the regulator is doing. It's controlling the voltage that this is putting into the battery. So that field wire puts a load on this, it changes it. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this generator, okay? We can put this back on if we really want to be slick. Make a band for it. I don't think I have anything long enough. Go all the way around. I just want to cover those windows. So that's okay. Wide enough to cover that. Really want it to stick out past the band. The unsightly. Look at that. Oh, man. The owner is standing right in front of me with his arms crossed. His body language is scaring me. My perception is off. This is just Manila folder for paper. It's a file folder. So it's, it's pretty stout. It's not going to get that much heat and it's going to insulate. So where was this? Square nut. No, it's most of the modern batteries you can't add water to. Uh, and that's those, the ones, the, I forget the, the nomenclature, the 
the modern ones have a gel in them. You cannot add fluid. So now we're going to charge the battery. It is four years old. Four and uh, four years and what is this? November, so four months. So it's getting close to five. What I'm going to do is just uh, charge it up. And then we'll see how that ammeter reacts. Uh, to see if his concerns were essentially unfounded. 